Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mojo Grip Mike here. So today I'm down in Cartersville, Georgia, and the aircraft you see right behind me is a Beechcraft Baron. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you around. I'm gonna talk to the owner and actually let him show you around the airplane. Stay tuned. Oh, well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dan Ritter from Cartersville, Georgia. And today we're gonna talk about this uh, Beach BE-55D model. It's a D-like dog. Uh, Beechcraft started building Barons in the 1960s, and uh, this was the uh, version they called the D, the dog model. Um, great airplane. I don't stand here to pretend to tell you that I'm the world's expert on Beechcraft or on Barons, but I've owned this airplane for 12 years, and it has been, and still is, a great outstanding airplane. Um, my previous history, of which I have a little over 10,000 hours, is flying mainly twin engine Cessnas. Been a Cessna fan, still a Cessna fan. Love some of the Cessnas. But 12 years ago when I was looking for an airplane, a friend of mine talked me into looking at the Barons, and I'm really glad they did because it has been an outstanding airplane for the last 12 years. I am not an aviation enthusiast that just loves to come to the airport and hang out on Saturday and fly airplanes and talk to other people that fly airplanes. My interest in air aviation, and always has been, is transportation. I'm a businessman, I've owned a number of companies, and what I use an airplane for is to get from point A to point B, to carry customers, to take samples, to do all those things that you need to promote a business. And that's what I've used this airplane for for the last 12 years. So let's talk about it a little bit and uh, kind of give you a quick tour around and show you a little bit about it. The Baron, as you can see, is a twin engine airplane, it has two 285 horse Continental engines, um, great engines, very, very smooth. We're uh, using on this, we're using the three blade McCullough prop. As I said, it has the Continental um, IO520 285 horse engines. I had a set in here before, they have TBOs of 1,600 horse, or 1,600 hours. Um, we ran those to 2,200 hours. No problem, they were doing great. I just chickened out and finally replaced them with uh, remanufactured uh, engines, which now have a little over 600, or, uh, 600 hours on them, and they're still running great. They've been really good engines. Um, fuel capacity. This aircraft has main tanks and auxiliary tanks, a total of uh, 142 gallons of useful of uh, total fuel, 136 gallons of useful fuel. It'll go a good five hours. With these engines, I normally run a little bit lean a peak and cruise. But what I do and how I use an airplane, I'm usually up at 10,000 going west, 11,000 coming east providing there's not a wind or weather situation, but that's normally where I'm at. At those altitudes, I'm burning about 12 gallons per hour per engine, 24 gallons an hour total. So based on that, I have a good five hours worth of fuel in the airplane. And, uh, and I have actually flown a little over five hours, and, and so I, I know it'll do it. Um, again, uh, replaced all the lights in it now with the LED, the latest LED lights. So we have the LEDs in the nav, we have them in the landing lights, uh, we have them in the strobes. The only thing I haven't replaced so far is the taxi light. The taxi light's still the original bulb, but everything else is LED. It does have the uh, T ice lights on the side of the engine the cell. You can see those there. We don't have D ice on this. I can tell you that in the 12 years I've flown it, and I've flown it all over the United States. It's been in almost, I would say, a good 40 of the lower 48s. I've had places where I've picked up a little ice climbing or descending, but it hasn't been a major issue. If I lived around the Great Lakes or someplace that was notorious for icing, it may be a different story. But what I use it for hasn't been an issue. Set up for six seats. Most of the 
time when I've operated this aircraft, I've done it with five seats. I usually keep this six seat out. Again, because the way I use the plane is I use it for business. I carry samples, I carry briefcases, we put our baggage in here. Uh, I usually have a sales rep or a sales manager with me. So it, it just gives us extra space. You notice that the, all the windows in the aircraft are tinted. And not only are they tinted, but they've been replaced with the thicker glass. This is not the standard glass either in the windscreen or the side windows. It's a half inch thick uh, plexiglass, which really makes a big difference on your sounding. Uh, the sound inside the cabin. It's, it's uh, considerably quieter than the stock airplane. Again, over here we have the main tanks up there and the auxiliary tank here. So there's tanks on both wings. You can cross feed them if you have to with an engine shut down. Fortunately, with this airplane, I've never had that, never had that need. But that is an option that you can do. This is uh, one of the landing lights we talked about a little while ago. It's been replaced with the LED bulb. Um, and I, while I've been doing some night flying, I just had an opportunity two weeks ago to come back from Memphis at night, and I was pretty impressed with the LED as far as lighting up the runway. Uh, it, it did a really, really good job. Okay, well, as you can see, this is a retractable gear aircraft. The, the gear is actually pretty darn fast on it for a retract gear. It's, um, it, it's of course, electric, and uh, it does a, a really good job coming up, and it's a pretty quick at going down as well. Performance-wise, this aircraft pretty much will climb out about 1,500 feet a minute, uh, up to six, seven thousand feet, and then a thousand feet a minute up to about ten thousand. It uh, cruises about 185 knots. As I mentioned earlier, I usually run at about a little bit lean a peak, which means I'm losing five to seven knots over what it possibly could do, but I'm also saving some fuel. So a little bit of difference in two hours of flight time between uh, five, six hour knots to me is worth saving the fuel. So um, it has a total useful load of 1,748 pounds. Um, so if you look at 142 pounds of fuel times six pounds per gallon, that'll give you an idea what the useful load is in the cabin. You can fill it up with fuel and put four full-size people in it plus baggage and you're good to go. Um, we've done a number of trips an hour, hour and a half, two hours, where we've had it full of six people and just the main tanks full of fuel, does great. Um, wow. One of the nice things about the D model Baron as opposed to the earlier models, the overall aircraft, the overall length of the aircraft is 18 inches longer than the B model. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you put people in the fifth and sixth seat, it really does trim out and it flies nice and smooth. Um, the B model Baron, you put people in that back seat, and it is almost impossible to get it to trim. It wants to porpoise all the time to put people back there. So this one, don't have that issue whatsoever. One of the things we did skip over, it has a gasoline heater. The heater's up here in the nose. We've had that overhauled, um, and it has a meter on it. it. It does have a time between intervals, so we put a meter on the engine that only records the hours that the heater is actually working. But the heater works great. Uh, the nice thing about a gas heater, you can flip it on the ground while you're taxing out and it'll heat up the cabin right away. So you don't have to wait until you get the engine uh, heat coming off of the engines. So let's talk a little bit about the inside of the aircraft now with the, uh, the business office of the airplane, if you will. When I first bought the airplane 12 years ago, it pretty much had a 100% king package in it, like a lot of aircraft did at that period. And since then, I think I have replaced every bit of avionics in the airplane. Um, when I started, it had just an attitude indicator up here and a, a king HSI down here. We've replaced that now with the Aspen unit and we use the backup over here for the uh, attitude indicator. This is the only instrument left in the airplane that runs on air. 
Keep in mind that the Beechcraft does not have a vacuum system. It has a pressure system, but this is the only thing left in here that runs off of that system. <clears throat> um, I really like the Aspen. It's all contained. It has taken me a little time to get acclimated to it, but once you get acclimated, it's really great to fly approaches with it. Um, the Aspen, of course, now ties in over here with the uh, Garmin 650 up here. We put in the uh, PA8000 um, audio panel. And now we have the Garmin 650 and the Garmin 430W. So both of these are wash units. Uh, great unit. You can program in where you're going, your waypoints, your your flight plan and everything, flight plan and everything into that. It would play over here on the Aspen, and it also plays down here on the uh, Garmin 795. So they both talk to each other. Again, a great little unit. Um, love this. I get my XM weather on it. Also, I'll get my XM music on it too on a long cross-country trip. Um, but also now that I have the ADS-B in and out. ADSB shows up on here as well as on the 650 and the 430. So I get I get my traffic in all three places. We still have the uh, the uh, Bendix radar in here. It's been a good radar. I've had it overhauled once since I've owned it, but it's been a really good radar. And um, in the summertime, I get a lot of use out of it. I will tell you that it's probably good to about 40 miles with your XM or um, ADSB weather and next rad weather you can see the weather a long ways away and then when you get close to it and you want to see where this individual cells are the radar works excellent for working your way through uh, lines of weather um, the 430 of course I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the Garmin 430 it's been around for a long time and like I mentioned a minute ago it is also a wash unit it actually plays down here on my backup um, uh, glide slope and uh, localizer needles. Now all of this is tied into the um, STEC 55X autopilot. Um, great autopilot. The only thing I don't have on the uh, 55X is I don't have altitude pre-select. Now on the Aspen I have altitude reminder. I can set my altitude where I want it, um, say up to 4,000 there, set it. Now I'm, it's going to give me a beep at 4,000, so I have to level off. I have never, there is a connection now between the Aspen and the and the uh, STEC that will, will give you pre altitude pre-select. I just have never seen a need for it. I just go ahead and level out myself, and, and that's all I need to do. Okay. So, now the the Aztec does give you pre-select as to what your rate of climb or your rate of descent is. If I want to climb at 500 feet a minute, or if I want to descend to 500 feet a minute, I can simply program that into here. We have the Garmin. I believe that's a 345. It's the latest Garmin transponder that has ADS in in ADSB in and out. I still have the old King transponder. Every so often, I'll turn it on and ask air traffic control if they can see it, which they always do. I kept it as a backup. It's my understanding after 2020, they won't use those anymore. But we'll see what the FAA does. All your switches are down along here. Um, your voltage regulator, your um, prop de-ice, that's the alcohol, um, pitot heats, Ram air de-ice, heater, um, this is your heater, uh, you have two igniters, one on and off, you have your strobe, you have nav, ice lights, taxi lights, landing lights, cow flaps, and your fuel boost pumps, all right along there, very handy to get at. Are those all of the circuit breakers, there's no more? Those are, those are just the switches. Okay. The circuit breakers are down underneath here and also underneath it here. Okay. I thought it was just okay. Uh, one of the interesting features about the Barons um, is that on, on your quadrant up here, you have your props, your throttle, and your uh, mixture. 
This is a little bit backwards. The most of your aircraft have your prop, your throttle over here and your props in the middle. It really takes no effort whatsoever to get used to this. I, like I mentioned earlier on, I've flown twin Cessnas all my life. It takes no problem at all to convert over to having it here um, in the center. Um, of course, both engines are independent of each other. So, um, it, it, and then down here also, we haven't talked about that yet, is your fuel controls. You have for the right tank and left tank. They're, right now they're set on the main tanks and your auxiliary tank. And as I mentioned earlier, you have a cross-feed option. We have a built-in digital clock. Um, great little gadget. I use it mainly for my fuel, uh, fuel consumption. I get the altitude, I trim the aircraft out, I turn, I turn the autopilot on, I turn the aircraft out, I um, go ahead and hit my boost pump on low, switch to the ox tanks for both sides, and turn the fuel pumps off. And a little side note, on this aircraft, you take off and land with the fuel pumps off, not on, but on. So, um, when I turn the fuel pumps off, then I start my clock. And I know that when I start this clock, I have two hours and 20 minutes. At two hours and 20 minutes, I go back to the main tanks. And that'll give me just about, there's 27 gallons of useful fuel in those tanks. And that'll just about give me all I want to get out of the ox tank. We've uh, also installed the rosin um, visors in here. Um, I didn't really know about those until I was at Sun and Fun one year and I looked at the booth and the guy said, all you have to do is replace the three screws and put them in. So I bought a set. Really great investment. If you've never flown with the rosin visors, uh, visors, they're great. You can see through them. They're a lot of flexibility, sunshine, no matter where it's at, for you and for the passenger. So um, that, that was a great addition to the airplane compared to the old visors that actually came with the aircraft. These are your, um, these are your indicators for your alternators. There's an alternator on each engine um, for your electricity, of course. And this is to tell you if, if you lose an alternator, one of these lights will come on to tell you it's out. As soon as you start the aircraft, these will go out. Cartonville 415, Romeo Whiskey, the Baron, taxiing out to runway one. Cartonville, Cartonville, runway one will be staying in the passenger seat. Georgia. Automated weather observation 2003 Zulu. Wind variable at 05. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Temperature 16 Celsius. Dew point 02 Celsius. Altimeter 3014. Remarks. Density altitude 800.